Hey guys, so now we're going to talk about the work done by gravity. As things are going up and down, how much work does gravity do? I think this is pretty straightforward, but I want to give you a clean explanation of it so that if you see this in a test, you can just knock it out of the park. All right, let's check it out. So the work done by gravity, remember positive work is when a force is helping motion, it's making you move faster, something like that. Negative work is when it's hurting motion. Friction is always uh, pulling against you, so it's hurting your motion, does negative work. And forces that don't affect motion at all do no work or they do zero work, okay? Here's our work equation, how we calculate work. Now, when an object is falling, gravity does positive or negative work on it. What do you think? Based on this definition here, helps motion, hurts motion. Do you think that when an object is falling, gravity does positive or negative work? Gravity does positive work on it, right? Because it's helping motion is what causes falling in the first place. So if you have a mass and it's falling, mg pulls it down. So gravity is helping motion. They go in the same direction. That's what you get. Now, if an object is going up, gravity is pulling against it, and gravity does negative work on it. It's that simple. Okay? Let's talk about one more thing. What about if you're lifting something? Well, the force to lift something is mg. This is a little bit counterintuitive, and I'll show you why. Uh, this might be confusing. So if you're lifting something, first of all, every object near the Earth is going to be pulled down by an mg. Okay? To lift it, your force to lift is mg. So at first you might look at this and say, well, if it's 100 down and I pull with 100 up, wouldn't it cancel? And it does. You're right. It cancels. If this is 100, then your force needs to be 100.0000001, but that's kind of silly. So it has to be slightly greater than mg, so we just basically set it equal to mg. Okay, but you understand there needs to be a little bit more, but mathematically kind of rounds to mg. So whenever you're lifting something, the force, the bare minimum force you need to lift it is um, mg. Okay? Now in physics, lifting, this is a very specific thing for physics, lifting in physics, if that's all you get, implies that you're taking it from an initial velocity of zero to a final velocity of zero. So there's a book here, and I'm going to lift it. Not moving. Not moving, right? So it's either from initial velocity of zero to a final velocity of zero. Another, another thing you might hear is that it's you're lifting something with a constant speed, right? So that's the same idea here. Uh, and the reason why it would be a constant speed is, again, if you get the object moving, and then these are the same thing, so the object accelerates a little bit to start moving, but then moves with a constant speed, okay? So lifting or lifting with a constant speed, this could be another one. Means that the force you need to do that is mg. The idea is that you need to barely overcome the force of weight that's pulling you down. So what is the work to lift something, right? Well. If the force to lift is mg, then the work to lift is the force to lift, which is mg, times the distance. Now, let's say you're lifting something a height of h, right? So the distance would be h times the cosine of theta. Now, if I pull something up, and as a result, the object moves up, the angle between these two is zero. So this is going to be zero right here. And you know the cosine of zero is um, one. So I'm going to say that the work to lift is mgh. Now, instead of calling this mgh, I'm actually going to call this mg delta h. Because mgh means that implies that you're starting from the ground. But maybe you're not starting from the ground. Maybe you're starting from two to three. So your delta H from 2 to 3 is 1. So mg delta H. I hope that you remember mg H. mg H was your potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is mg H. So mg delta H 
is basically your change in gravitational potential energy. Okay, change in gravitational potential energy. So long story short, work lift is this. That's how you're going to calculate it. But sort of conceptually, it's the change in potential energy. And this should make sense. If you have a box at the on the floor, it has no potential energy. When you lift, it gains 100 joules of potential energy. And that's because you did 100 joules of work. So you pumped 100 joules of potential energy into this thing. If you lift it, you're doing positive work. If you bring it down, you're doing negative work. Because at that point, if you move something down, you're stealing potential energy from that object. Right? You can think about it that way. Gravity does negative work if you lift something. Because as you're going up, gravity is pulling you down. So it's going opposite to the displacement. So and the reason why that's going to happen is because you're going to have mg. That's the force of gravity. So the work done by mg is mg. If you go up that way, height. But gravity is pulling you down. Gravity is pulling you down which means the the angle here will be 180 okay so this would be the cosine of 180 and this is going to be negative 1 so i can say that it's negative mg delta h so instead of being the change in potential energy it's going to be the negative change in potential energy which means instead of being final minus initial it's initial minus final, okay? The important one to remember is this one, and this is more of a conceptual one. So notice how these things are complete opposites, okay? So you can just remember that the work to lift is mg delta h, and the work done by gravity as you're moving something up and down is m negative mg delta h, okay? If you're moving up, then your delta h is positive, and if you're moving down, then your delta H is negative, right? Final minus initial, okay? So this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna do some examples here, and I think you guys are gonna get it, all right? That's it, mg delta H, which is, should make sense because it's the gravitational potential energy. You lift something, you give it potential energy, and that's coming from the work that you did, okay? So you lift a three kilogram box straight up from the floor and place it on a shelf two meters, uh, on a shelf two meter tall shelf, there's an extra shelf here, um, two meter tall shelf above the floor. So let's say there's a three kilogram book here, box rather, it's on the floor. And let's say over here there is a shelf, right? And you're gonna move this guy and put it over here. I wanna know how much work did you do? And this is very straightforward, okay? The work done by you is the same thing as the work done to lift. And the work done to lift is mg delta h. Okay, um, if this is two meters high, I can say that this H is zero, this H is two, so your delta H is just plus two. Okay, very straightforward. Mass is three, gravity is 10, this is plus two. So this is 60 joules. For part B, what is the work done by gravity? The work done by gravity or the work done by weight, same thing, those, those are used interchangeably. Uh, technically not the same thing, but they're used interchangeably. Um, the work done, so it's going to be instead of mgh, if you remember, it's negative mg delta h. Now, the variables are exactly the same. The only thing that happens different here is that you have a negative. So it's just going to be negative 60, right? Check it out. Negative 3, 10. This is still plus 2. I'm still going up. The reason why it's negative, it's not because a plus 2 becomes negative, but because there's a negative in front of the equation. This is negative 60 joules. It says the box then falls to the floor. How much work does gravity do then? So the box is falling. Here's a three kilogram box. It's falling. So I can say the initial height is, the initial height is zero. And I'm sorry, the initial height is two. And the final height is zero. So what is my change in height? My change in height is negative two. Why? Because I dropped two, okay? So if I go here, the work done by gravity is always negative mgh or mg delta h. 
negative 3, gravity we're using 10, my delta H is negative 2 right here. Okay, just to be clear, this negative 2 comes from here. And if you do this, the negatives cancel and you get a positive 60 joules. And this should make sense because gravity does positive work on the way down. So you gave this object 160 joules of potential energy. And then meanwhile, gravity was doing negative work against you. And when it drops, gravity gives it back the 60 joules of potential energy that it kind of stole on the way up. Okay, So gravity does negative work going down and positive work. I'm sorry, negative work going up and positive work going down. Okay, That's the gist of it. We're going to do a few more problems. I want you to try this one. It's a little tricky, um, but I think you might be able to get it. Let's give this one a shot.